By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back with some revised Unsleeved. We already did that a little bit last week and it was just so much fun. I thought let's put another episode here uh, on the channel. If you've missed last week's episode, by the way, there's a link popping up right now. You can click on there and then you can have a look at my first Unsleeved revised du um, duel. It was so much fun. So not a dual land, but a duel is in a duel, you know? Okay, this is getting... Okay, we're getting off topic. Anyway, um, I'm playing today with a, a deck that I've called Three Color Bowl. And my opponent is playing with a mono black deck. So mono black against three color bowl. Um, the decks are completely revised and they're completely sleeveless. Here we see a nice picture of a beautiful beat up deck box. That's the deck box that actually this deck is in. And just to give you a little uh, history, history lesson. Uh, when you started Magic back in the day, you know, um, you would actually buy one of these starter decks. I know they no longer sell them today, but you would just get one of these starter decks and that would be the base of just really your Magic deck. You couldn't buy singles. Well, you could, but the, the, the starting point was just getting one of these deck boxes. They had uh, 60 cards in them and a rule book. And um, the first thing you did after buying one of these was just trying to trade just to get the right color. Right, so you're not even looking at what the card does. You're more like, hey, I've got like eight blue cards, so if I can have like 12 blue cards, that would be nice. Get some islands, so you would just start trading like that. That was the whole idea. And then later on, when you had all the right colors, you would start looking at, okay, what do I actually have? And then maybe buy some booster packs and just try to improve your deck. So you would open up a booster pack and actually add a lot of cards from the booster in your starter deck and then the other deck the other cards that you had left over would automatically go into your trading binder and you could trade them with other players so that's kind of that's really the way that you know the game was set anyway this is uh, this is the little history lesson let me know if you have memories and if you also started magic the gathering with a starter deck i would love to hear from you um and um i don't have a deck photo of my opponent unfortunately maybe i said that already or not but I don't have that, but I do have a lovely deck po uh, picture of my deck. So let's go and have a look at the deck that I'm pl playing with today, Three Color Bowl. And here we see my deck, Three Color Bowl. Now, why is it called Three Color Bowl? Let's start with the three colors, right? That's pretty obvious. I'm playing blue, red, and green. So that's why we have three colors there in the title. And then bowl refers to the fireballs and also the disintegrates. There are actually more disintegrates in here than fireballs. That's simply because I've got more beat up disintegrates than fireballs for some reason. I don't know why. Um, when you look at this deck, you probably notice that there's very little uh, mana fixing in this deck. There is no mana fixing in this deck, which is not great when you're running a three color deck. But remember, this is unsleeved revised. So the only cards that you can pick are those in your shoebox that you forgot about that are like eaten by rats, right? So it's, it's a little bit limited. Although I have to say, again, when you look at this deck picture, some cards look pretty nice, but they all have some sort of damage. Uh, trust me on that. So we've got a mana short in here, which is actually a rare, pretty cool, right? You can see that beautiful uh, rose, one blue and two, and it's an instant and it taps or interrupt. It's an instant or interrupt. Anyway, it taps all the lands of your opponent. So that's one of my most powerful cards in here. Now, the main idea of this deck is I want to defend myself. That's number one. So I'm going to play Wall of Water, Wall of Brambles, big creatures with a lot of uh, defense stats, a lot of toughness, like Iron Root Tree Folk, Wall of Water, um, Obsanius Golem, Sea Serpents, they're really beefy, right? And they can protect me. So I'm not putting them in there to attack, actually, they're just gonna protect. And then I've got two uh, Protocol Sorcerers. So behind those big beefy creatures, I can start pinging a little bit, you know, all safe as a Timmy and start kind of getting that life total low. And when that life total is low enough, bam, a huge fireball or a disintegrate will, will happen next. There is a little side plan in this deck, which is uh, the Phantasmal Terrains. So I can use Phantasmal Terrains uh, on my opponent so that I can then attack with my Sea Serpent. Because remember, Sea Serpent is something that we now call Island Home. So it means if I don't have any islands, Sea Serpent it dies. Uh, but it can also only attack if my opponent controls an island. So with Phantasmal Terrain, I can give him an island. And actually, I was talking about that I had no mana fixing. That is not true. I can also use the Phantasmal Terrain on my own lands to try to make the type of land that I need. It's not, you know, it's not perfect. It's not like playing a dual land or a Birds of Paradise, but 
it is a way of getting what you need. And if you really, for example, just need that red mana to play that the decisive burn spell, Phantasmal Terrain can help me out there. Because remember, it can make any basic land, not just island, any basic land of your choice. Uh, another card that's actually mana fixing as well that I kind of forgot at the at the start of this is Wild Grove. So Wild Grove is one green, beautiful art by Mark Poole in Enchant Land. And when you tap that land, you get an additional green. So it can basically make uh, a land into a dual land. I can make Taigas and Tropical Islands now thanks to my Wild Grove. So that's pretty cool, right, in a budget format. I also play with how many fogs? I think four fogs just to stop my opponent and also stream of life. So just the idea of this deck is quite basic. Protect myself, gain life, prevent combat damage, and then or ping my opponent or kill my opponent with a huge fireball or disintegrate or kind of do a combination of both. So that's the idea of this deck. Now, and like I said before, I don't have a deck photo, unfortunately, of the mono black player. I do know he's playing with Urg Raiders. So I'm expecting a pretty aggressive brew. So if, yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be shaky this matchup, but I'm definitely gonna do my best. This is my deck. Now let's go to the games. Game number one, and here we go. The rolling of the dice to see who gets to start. I wonder if my strategy is gonna work. Hopefully I can find the right mana. Play out some big creatures, keep my opponent at bay here with that mono black deck that he's playing. Really afraid he's going to get an Urk Raiders turn two. That would be pretty heavy. Passing turn here. And we both haven't cast a single thing here, uh, turn one. Let's see what he can do. First, probably exactly playing another land, right? So that's a basic swamp. I believe he only plays basic swamps. But no Urk Raiders. Okay, good news for me here. So it's giving me an extra turn, playing a forest and pass turn. So maybe next turn I can play Wall of Brambles or perhaps Wall of Water if it can get second island. Okay, he's gonna cast something here. I This is Frozen Shade, an O1 creature, but for every swamp you put into it, it gets plus one, plus one. So it can get pretty out of hand. Tapping one green for a wild growth, so kind of created my own taiga here. Oh, actually putting it over my island, creating a tropical island, I guess. And now I'm tapping... There is a Timmy. Okay, that's really good news. That means that if um, my opponent here taps out of swamps, I can actually kill the frozen shade. Oh, weakness! Ah, oh, that is bad news. Oh, that is bad news. My Timmy dies to a weakness. There is a Dark Ritual and a Juggernaut. Oh, no. What a horrible turn this is for me. I was feeling quite confident with the Timmy on the battlefield, but look at the situation now. We've got Juggernaut and a Frozen Shade. Tapping here some mana. Oh, this is nice. Control Artifact taking over the Juggernaut. And remember, I'm playing against black, so I don't think that uh, that there's anything that he can do against enchantment. So that con uh, steel artifact is there to stay. Really, really happy with this steel artifact. And remember, Frozen Shade, despite the artwork, beautiful art by, I believe, Douglas Schuler, it doesn't have flying. So it kind of looks like it's flying, but it doesn't fly high enough, I guess, to really have flying. And they're tapping five. What is he going to play? Ooh, a drain life for three. Oh, man. That is unfortunate. So he's just killing the Juggernaut. I mean, under normal circumstances, that wouldn't be too bad because it's kind of like a two for one for my opponent. But, I mean, that Frozen Shade, that's a problem. Next turn, he can hit me for five with the Frozen Shade. Tapping everything here. What am I going to do? Maybe a huge stream of life, perhaps? Let's see. Looks like I'm... I'm, I'm oh, changing my mind. <laughs> I'm tapping everything. Yeah, I think this is a good idea instead of playing a Disintegrate. That's a very good decision. Remember, Disintegrate and also Fireball, they're sorcery, so I can only do it in my own turn. And now uh, my opponent was tapped out, so I could just... Play Disintegrate for one and kill the Frozen Shade. So both of us only having lands, but I've got more cards in hand. So it's kind of looking okay for me here. Drawing into card number four. My opponent only having one card. 
casting. Now I'm casting the stream of life. That's probably what I wanted to do earlier before I changed my mind. I think I made a really, really good decision. Need some extra dice here. Let's get one, two, three, four, six life. I think. And I already took a damage or not. Yeah, so now I'm on 25. And passing turn here. Another swamp for my opponent. This is perfect. I wonder what card he has in the hand. Maybe another weakness or something, something to put on a creature. Maybe an unholy strength. I think he plays those as well. And tapping two blue for Phantasmal Terrain. Yeah, there's a Phantasmal Terrain creating an island. Now let's hope I can find a Sea Serpent and deal some damage. So we're both a little stuck at this moment in the game. Another Swamp, but remember, you know, my opponent is playing with Drain Life. So those Swamps, they can, you know, turn into something useful later on. So it's still worth my while to use those Phantasmal Terrains. Ooh, we see a Raise Dead. Ooh, he's getting back the Juggernaut. That's interesting. Oh, the Frozen Shade, of course, is removed from the game because of the Disintegrate. That is true. I think Elsie would have probably chosen the Frozen Shade because he's got so many Swamps. But this is also a bit of a problem for me, having that Juggernaut. Remember, Juggernaut cannot be blocked by walls. So even if I would cast like a Wall of Brambles, it's not going to help me. At least I'm still on 25, so I can take a lot of hits. Ooh, another good card, Dancing Scimitar. 1-5, Flyer, attacking for 5, going to 20. I really need something here. Playing a Tim is not going to help me. This is not great. Next turn, he can deal 6, actually. I'm going to drop to 14. This is a problem. I wonder what I have in hand still. Perhaps a uh, fog, for example. I'm pretty sure if it was a burn spell, I would have played it by now. There is a weakness, and again, weakness kills my Timmy. The second weakness. <laughs> you can see me throwing away the weakness. Like, man, why are you doing this to my Timmies? Be gone with you, evil sorcerer. Anyway, I dropped to uh, to 14. All these artifact creatures all of a sudden attacking me. I need to do something. Things were looking really, really good for me when uh, when I got rid of that uh, Frozen Shade. You know, more cards in hand, enough lands, but I guess I didn't really draw into something useful. Still, now I have three in hand. There should be something in there, right? Come on. Need to do something. At least play, I don't know, another small creature. Looks like I'm taking a drink. I don't know what I'm doing. Passing turn. Oh, I'm eating something. Attack. Okay, there's a fog. So that's kind of nice. That buys me some time. So I'm still stuck on, on 14. I can take a few more hits. And I'm gesturing towards... Oh, that's why I'm gesturing towards the Juggernaut. Because it just drew into a wall of water. And like, oh man, this is not going not gonna to help me. Then I realized that I need to do this a little bit different. And what else am I going to do here? Oh, I'm playing a flight on my wall of water. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know why I'm tapping the lands that way. I have no idea. But anyway, um, yeah, now it makes sense. Am I going to do something else? Disintegrate? Interesting. Did I have that all the time then? Why didn't I play that before? Or did it just top deck it? Weird, weird, weird. Uh, anyway, playing this Integrate on the Juggernaut and having a blocker for the Dancing Scimitar, it looks like we've got a game again. Although, you know, my brother has tons of cards in hand, so that's not great. What is he going to do next here? Oh, playing a fear. Aye, that is bad. That's such a good card. Also gaining a life from the uh, Bone of Throne. Oh, man. This is bad news because the, the, the fear says that the creature can only be blocked by uh, black creatures or artifact creatures. So this is bad. This is bad. I need, I need another blocker again. At least it's only one damage. So it's not... 
you know, the worst. It would have been far worse if the Juggernaut would have still been on the battlefield and he could have cast uh, Fear on the Juggernaut. There I go, playing another Wild Grove. Not really the card that I need. I am counting, so I'll probably have a burn spell in hand. The problem is my opponent is already on 24 because of those drain lives earlier in the game. So he's pretty high on life. Now he also got that uh, bone of throne. There is a dark ritual. Another dark, oh no, this is gonna be a huge drain life. Oh, yuck. Oh man. I'm dead, right? Six. He's got enough. He's got enough to kill me. Or maybe... Yeah, ten. I think he's got ten. No, he can do eleven. Right? No, he can't. Ooh, I'm on one. I still got one more turn. Let's see what I can do. Probably nothing, but who knows? Miracle time? Miracle time? Probably a big, huge fireball. But why would I do that? Why not just kill the Dancing Scimitar and buy me some more time? Oh, a huge stream of life. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, that is funny. So there we go. But still, it doesn't change much of the situation. I've, I've bought myself some time, yes, but it's not going to help. It's a throne of bone, by the way. I don't know why I call it a bone throne. That's uh, okay. But you probably, uh, you probably know what I'm talking about, right? So he's attacking me again. I'm on nine. Uh, another drain life. Man. Those drain lives is really, really the, the, the card that's kind of winning the game here for my opponent. The great thing about drain life is it gives you life and it takes life. It's like a stream of life and a disintegrating one. So I've got a huge fireball, but it's just not going to help me. And I'm going to, of course, kill the Dancing Scimitar and, you know, try to also deal some damage to my opponent. But this is not what I want to do. I want to play the burn to the dome. I don't want to play the burn against the creatures. But because of that fear, I'm kind of forced to do that. Okay, there's a scavenging goal. At least the scavenging goal I can block. It's a 2-2. And he also gains a life again from his throne of bone. Man, 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 man. This is not cool. Give me something. Wall of Brambles, okay. Wall of Brambles, two, three wall, and for one green you can regenerate it. So it's pretty, pretty strong, efficient blocker. And, ooh, Frozen Shade. Okay, Frozen Shade, not a big problem as long as I can keep my wall of brambles, right? I can just block on wall of brambles and regenerate. So that's actually not a big problem. I think a bigger problem actually is that my opponent gains life every time he plays a black spell as well. Okay, there's the Obsanius Golem, a 4-6 creature, which looks really big, but I mean that Frozen Shade can get pumped up by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 swamps. So it can become a 7-8. So it can just gobble up my Golem. And of course, I want to keep as many islands untapped to pump up my wall of water. So that's why I'm kind of changing the mana that I'm tapping. And untapping everything now. Let's have a look. What I need are just a couple of burn spells. The problem is I've already played out quite a lot of burn spells and I'm only on two. If he can find Away. Oh, this is the way. Pestilence. This is the way through. Pestilence. Yeah, that's it. Aye, 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 aye. Well done. Well done. Pestilence here for the win. And you know when you're on two, 
uh, you know, it's going to be a tough match. You know, <laughs> like, how can I stay alive? You know, stay, stay, stay alive. Uh, you know, that's going to be a problem. Um, okay, congratulations uh, to my opponent for winning the first game. But hey, he hasn't won the second game yet. So let's go to game two and, uh, you know, see if I can make my deck work. Let's go. Game number two. At least I'm on the play here. That's going to help me a little. Uh, let's see. Oh, I've got to turn one play. Wild Grove. That's pretty good. According to the book, there is a swamp and a pass turn. An island. Let's see what I can do with this. Not playing a wall of brambles. Just pa passing turn here. And there's a dark ritual. And oh, Juggernaut turn two. Oh man, this is not good. Remember, Juggernaut cannot be blocked by walls. This is a big problem. I need to get rid of the Juggernaut. And playing a Shatter. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Haven't seen a Shatter earlier. Not sure why I want to draw a card after playing a Shatter. I'm uh, <laughs> changing my mind, it seems. Oh, this is pretty cool. A Netling Imp. A really beautiful creature. A 1 1. You can tap it and then you can force a creature to attack. And. Ooh, look at that. Playing my mana short. Playing my rare. Kind of to slow my opponent down here. Attacking me for 1. I'm going to drop to 19. Then I'm going to take my turn. So it basically did his job. My opponent couldn't play out anything. Unfortunately, neither can I in the following turn, and I have to pass as well. And there is, ooh, what's that called again? Uh, it's an 06 wall that you can regenerate. And I'm playing a wall as well, wall of water. Living wall, that's the word, living wall, that's the name. I just needed a moment. Beautiful, well, beautiful, very gruesome art. Living wool. Oh no, a pestilence. And that pestilence in combination with living wool. That is a strategy here. Look, my opponent is pointing that out. This is a big problem. Yes, he's probably going to use the, uh, lose the Netling Imp, but who cares? I mean, he'll be able to deal tons of damage. And the living wool has regeneration, so he can regenerate it. And it's an 06 as well. So this is a really, really good situation for my opponent. I don't really think I have a way to get rid of enchantments. Don't play with Tranquility. Tapping, playing a Sea Serpent. Now the problem with the Sea Serpent is that it cannot attack. And it's nice to have Wall of Water and Sea Serpent next to each other on the board, but it's not going to help me much. Tapping six. What is he going to cast for six? Ooh, wow! Nightmare, he's got, he's got a Nightmare in the deck? That's insane. That's insane. Six, six, Nightmare. Nightmare, one uh, black and five to cast, and it's got power and toughness equal to the amount of swamps you have. It's a flyer. That's just crazy. That is just crazy. Tapping a lot for a huge disintegrate, probably on the Nightmare. No mana left to do anything about it, uh, which is kind of nice, but it's not going to help me. That Pestilence is still there, and he's still got that Living Wall. And there's this Sea Serpent. Of course, I cannot attack with the Sea Serpent, and now he's forcing me to attack with it. Ah, that's me, man. I missed that. Ah. Yeah, Sea Serpent dies. Oh, man. That was a misplay, playing that card out. That was That was not good. And I kind of feel like my, my opponent here has been in the driver's seat all along this whole this whole game. I mean, he started off with early pressure with the Juggernaut, and at least I had a Shatter, but after that he just kept putting threats on the board. That Pestilence is just is, is so decisive, I feel, in this, uh, in this uh, second game. And he's going to attack, I'm going to block, and he's probably going to use it for four, exactly. And I'm going to lose my Wall of Water, he's going to lose his Netling Imp. Doesn't matter much, at least if I block I get one damage less. You know, that's the only difference. He was going to do that anyway. 
And now he can start doing the Pestilence game and he can deal five damage a turn with Pestilence. Rem remember, Pestilence um, is an enchantment, two black and two, and for one black you deal one damage to everybody, every creature, every player on the board. And um, Pestilence destroys itself if there are no creatures on the board anymore. But of course, with Living Wool, you can regenerate the Living Wool, so it will always be on there. And using the Pestilence again, I'm on 11 already. If I can find a stream of life, maybe get ahead in life totals or a burn spell, those things could kind of help me here. I don't think I should play out anything, to be honest. No creatures, at least. But of course, I'm doing that anyway. <laughs> it's just kind of stupid. Okay, we're all taking three damage now. I'm on eight. What I need is, well, I'm dead, I think, almost dead already. What I need is a burn spell or a stream of life to kind of get ahead on life total, because then the pestilence gets really difficult to use for my opponent. Gonna do it for three. I'm on five, he's on nine. Let's hope I can find a stream of life. Give me a stream of life, please. Or a burn spell. Yes, stream of life. Okay, so uh, three, four, five, eight life. Something like that. Okay, seven, I guess. Seven, yeah, seven. Okay, so I'm on 12. That means I'm ahead on life. That is good news. He's on nine, I'm on 12. And now I can like wait until I get into a burn spell kill my opponent. That's the strategy now. He, I don't want to see a drain life. I do not want to see a drain life. Raise that. Juggernaut. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> that's bad news. Remember, Juggernaut cannot be blocked by walls. Wall of water. Guess what? It's a wall. Okay, so this is not good. This is bad news. If you're in Timmy land right now, it's bad news. I've got another problem here hitting the board. This is getting, ah, uh, all these problems, they're making me tired. I'm on 12. If I take a hit from the Jugger, I go to 7. I'm lower than my opponent, and he can kill me with the Pestilence. So what I need right now is a Burn Spell. Right? Can I burn for... No, I cannot even burn for 9. So... Okay, this is something. Iron Root Tree Folks. Actually pretty good. It's a 3-5. No, Tear! Oh, man! Oh. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, then it's pretty much over, I think. He's going to hit me for five. I'm going to drop to seven. And he's going to use the Pestilence. Am I right? Two. Yeah, he's got seven. Seven in total. Seven in total. That's it. He just had too many answers. That, that That's a problem. I'm not sure why he's, down, uh, why he's not doing it. Yeah, there you go. Dead. Oh, look at my hand. Look at my hand. I had it in my hand. I had Fireball Disintegrate. I just needed two turns. Two turns to play them both out and, and he would have been dead. Oh, man. So close. Yeah, so far. Because I know that so close doesn't, doesn't count in magic. <laughs> Anyway, congratulations, uh, you for winning this one fair and square. And uh, yeah, I'm not salty at all. Uh, thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. If you want to see more unsleeved revised, let me know in the comments below and I'll, I'll see if I can uh, jam some more games, get some more decks in. Um, I do have a lot of beat up revised, not enough to, to build a lot of decks, but I have some still. So, um, yeah, if you like the format, let me know and, uh, and I'll make some more decks and put some more videos online. Uh, of course, I would like to thank you, uh, for watching another episode. You're really supporting the channel by doing so. Talking about that, uh, you can support us by leaving a like, leaving a comment, and of course, subscribing on the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Also, you know, share it on your socials. If you think it's cool content, share it. Help me grow, you know, help Timmy Talks become a bigger and bigger channel. Talking about helping, you can also become a sponsor of the show. And you can do that by joining me on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the channel. That means you'll have access to Discord. You'll also have the opportunity to 
um, to just kind of ask me about decks, to discuss things. Uh, there's also a little welcoming package that you get when you become a patron. Uh, we also have some events. We have tournaments uh, every once in a while. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can join all the fun if you become a patron. So maybe it's something for you. You can click on the link that's probably has popped up already in the right top corner, the info card there. Uh, yeah, check it out. See if it's something for you. Talking about patrons, let's take a look at the end scroll and uh, let's see who are fantastic, amazing, beautiful, super handsome uh, channel members and patrons are. Let's go. Ik het was fikker te somber gezien.